Hey, what's going on and good morning everybody. This is David Pendleton and we're going to be walking through the rookie division for the Desert Dunes tournament. So I hope everybody had a great week off last week from tournament play. And now more than likely we're going to be playing three tournaments in a row with this one. You know, you have to think that we're going to get a nine hole cup next week and then we'll start off a new season with another tournament again. So three weeks of tournaments in a row more than likely. We've got our work cut out for us. But uh, I am very excited to show you this playthrough here as things went really well. You know, the only thing that is unfortunate is hole number two. I did get a hole in one on, just not on this account. So, you know, with that being said, I have a lot of great replays to go over with you. Many drop shots. And as I normally do, there are some aggressive routes uh, that we can take on Rookie. I will show some of the players that have good clubs and, you know, berserkers on hand how to go a little crazy with it, but then I'll also show you the same hole on a much more uh, less aggressive approach. So a couple different ways to play some of these. If you're not a subscriber yet, please become one. It would really mean a lot to me. And then if you can take just a second there and hit that thumbs up button and like the video, that goes a long way for us. All right, let's go ahead and head into this bad boy. Hole number one is gonna play, be played 10% at max. And just for reference here, you're gonna see I'm putting my white ring right on the rough line. Katana ball is plenty of juice for this hole. As you can see here, we're only going with, you know, five bars of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right. For those of you who are playing with an extra mile seven or less, you're capped out at four and a half bars of top spin, but it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to be playing the second shot with a thorn no matter what. If you wanted to use a little bit of overpower with a smaller extra mile, you can. I just want you to be cautious on hole number one with using OP because we don't want to hit this ball too far and go into the rough. And as you can see here, with five bars of top spin, you know, it's not close, but it's, uh, it's close enough to point out if someone were to use overpower. This is going to bring us to shot number two. Shot number two, it's important that I put 10% at max. I don't always tell you the at distance on the second shot because it's really up to you to determine where you're at with your own club length. However, uh, on my first account, I did miss this ball to the left-hand side, and I pulled it at mid. So, you know, I decided on this account just to try to play it at max, and it does work out perfect. As you can see here, we're going to hit a perfect ball, and this ball is going to find its way into the home, exactly where it's supposed to go, in the hole, dead center. So I did pull that one 10% at max, even though I was not at max distance of my club. I do think that's the way we'll need to play hole number one. All right. Hole number two. We do pick up a hole in one here. Uh, so this was my first attempt at it. So it, some of these replays are a little bit sloppy because I was really trying to figure out how to play the hole, uh, you know, on the fly. So we're going to need to use a Marlin here. A Navigator is too much power unless you want to take the rough bump with your Goliath which I don't recommend. Uh, I think this is going to play a lot better with a sniper. So we're going to go with the power zero ball. I'm going to go ahead and play this one mid distance at 0%. And the reason that I'm playing mid is just because this is, this is heavy headwind. And I'm going to pull it at mid to compensate for that, meaning I'm going to have to pull my rings further back. And it just worked out on this one. As you can see here, it finds its way in. And we're starting off with uh, showing drops on hole number one and hole number two. And that's going to bring us into hole number three. Hole number three a little frustrating because I felt like I should have picked up the albatross on this hole. Um, but I'm going to tell you what I think we need to do for you to get it. And the key may be not to hit perfect. And I'm kind of joking, but not really joking. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why here in a second. All right, so for this shot is going to be shot number one, of course. We're going to go ahead and just play this one 0% as well. I'm putting my yellow ring kind of up in the corner there of the fairway. Don't need any elevation. We're using just a tad of curl to the right-hand side. That's not a big deal either. But as you can see here, we have plenty of room to work with. And this is going to lead us into a nice territory for a rough bump for an albatross. Now, I did miss it uh, on my first attempt. So this is my second attempt trying to correct my miss. Full side spin to the left. Now we know that's good. And what we want to do here is we want to find like this sticky spot on the green in which we can move our target around, but our ball guideline doesn't move too much. As you can see here, I finally found it and I settle in for this shot. 
Now I'm aiming dead center, okay? And I'm pulling this one 0% as well. So in 4.4 .4 wind, I only pulled this 3.9 rings. That's it. Now you're going to see a perfect ball. And even with less of a pull, um, I still miss this one to the right-hand side. But just barely. Now, you know, uh, my opponent hit a great left and dropped the shot, which was funny because both of my accounts I missed to the right-hand side just like that. And an opponent hits a great left and hits an albatross. Um, you know, the only thing that I could say here is we might just want to go ahead and favor the left-hand side of the cup. So I would play the same elevation and the same type of spin, but I would go ahead and just offset this one left-hand side. And I think that's going to pull us in closer to getting this thing to drop for an albatross. So I was a little disappointed with two perfect balls and no albas on that funnel, but it is what it is, and we move on to hole number four. Hole number four, pretty close here. So I want you to play this one at 25% at max. The shot that you are seeing right now is being played at 30%. So I would like you to play the same spin adjustments, the same landing area, but I would like you to play it at 25%. 30% here was just a little bit too much. Now we are extremely close to getting that ball to drop in for the hole in one. And you know the thing about it is I, I don't I don't see a lot of opponents going to be dropping this shot throughout the tournament. There will be a rough bump that we might play later with different wins. But for now, 25% at max. Take a look at the spin adjustment here, the back spin. was about 3.8 back. And then as you can see here, we're trying to aim directly at the hole. And with because of the flicker of headwind, I'm like have my arch of my last bounce. You can see here, like, like it's bouncing into the cup because we want to make sure that we don't leave it short. So if you notice here, my third bounce, the one right before the cup, is like right on the line of the dark green row. So right where the dark green and the light green meet, my ball guideline is right there. And I zoom in like this when I play so that I can point these types of things out whenever we go through these walkthroughs. So remember, this was 30% pull, and we just pulled a little bit too much to the right. So 25%, and that ball would have been in the hole. Okay, so now we're going to go into hole number five. Hole number five, I thought about playing a berserker here, as you can see. Uh, we will be playing that shot with crosswind or tailwind. But, um, you know, as you can see, I, I go into these things <laughs> not knowing the wind angles. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out how do I want to play this. So I decided to go to a big topper here. Big topper, kingmaker. And I'm going to pull this one 10% at max. Now you're going to see the overpower that I'm using. About half of my ball was halfway in the bottom adjustment zone. There was room to use more overpower if I wanted to. But the thing about more overpower is with the big topper, that needle is going to get really shaky on you. And you, um, you know, might have a little bit of a hard time hitting a perfect ball. And that could put you in the sand or rough. It would not kill your chances. <laughs> uh... It's not going to kill your hole. You're not going to par if that happens. You're still going to pick up the birdie. But, of course, on a short par four, we're definitely looking for the eagle. Now, I do not want to be in inbringer range from this distance. I'd rather be inbringer from up close, not long distance. But as you can see here, I'm going to line this thing up, and I'm going to play this one 10%. I'm going to play it 10% at max. Now, of course, it's going to be up to you because you might be taking this shot with a thorn. And you'll need to judge the own distance of where you're at. So if you're at minimum, mid, or max. You know, sometimes a tournament, well, most of the time a tournament is not just copy and paste. As you can see here, we just barely burned the left edge of the cup. That one's a little bit difficult to figure out how to play. So on this account, I did decide 
to go bombs away. So for you that have, you know, extra mile eights, nines, if you guys have berserkers, guys or gals have berserkers to spare, uh, you can definitely power this ball pretty nicely up the fairway here. But again, the biggest thing is going to be, are you going to be able to hit perfect? Because this fairway does get narrow and, you know, I'm almost full OP, but not quite. But I do hit a perfect ball here. As you can see here, we really get this one up nice, leaving us with an extremely short chip in for the eagle. And here I am at short distance range, so that does allow me to go with a max top spin shot with my inbringer. And from here in direct headwind, I just know that all I have to do is just leave my ball guideline pretty decently through the pin. And if I hit perfect, this ball is going in the hole. I don't have to worry about adjusting for elevation whenever we're getting direct headwind like that. Same thing with tailwind. All right, so we do pick up the eagle there on the more aggressive route, but I do think both ways are going to be able to eagle the hole. All right, that's going to bring us into hole number six. Now, with hole number six, if you're not playing with, with high-level snipers, then I need you to make sure that you pack a big dog for this hole. I will not be playing a big dog on this hole because most people with a sniper are able to reach down here into with a sniper. It's all going to be depend on how hard you want to push your drive. I would definitely use a Titan. I would not use a Kingmaker because we do not want to reduce the wind on shot number two. Shot number two, you are getting tailwind and you're going to need all of it. Now, as you're going to notice here, I am not using any overpower at all. None. And I kept myself on the left-hand side of the fairway. If you really wanted to try to pick up an albatross opportunity, which I do think hole number six is very difficult, but if you wanted to try, um, the more on the right-hand side of this fairway that you can get, the better. As you can see, I leave my ball guideline right down the middle, but the more right-hand side you can get, the better, because it's a shorter distance to the pin. But either way, um, I'm still going to be at max distance with my sniper. That's why I'm saying that some of you might need to play with the big dog. So just keep that in mind. Just know your own club level and know your own skill and what you're comfortable with. But here I'm just going to try to get this thing into the hole with max uh, side spin to the left and going very heavy on the back spin, as you can see. This is almost six bars of back spin. My shot clock's running out on me, so I just go ahead and line it up as good as I can. I pulled this one 20% at max. 20% at max. And, you know, we still miss this one by a mile, in my opinion. It's, it's not even close to going in. So that's one we're going to have to work on as the tournament progresses. But either way, we're picking up an eagle on hole number six. And that brings us into hole number seven. Hole number seven, we get pretty close to dropping as well. Again, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, I do know there is a rough bump here on this hole. We're not going to be playing it in this type of wind angle. We're going to save that for hopefully good crosswind or nice tailwind in future rounds. But yes, there is a rough bump there. You can play it if you want. But I was just trying to appeal to most people on rookie. And I just don't think it's the right wind angle to play it. This is going to be a safe shot. 10% at mid, using our old trusty navigator as we normally try to do on par threes in rookie. The only thing we're going to need to do here differently is probably offset this shot just a little bit to the left-hand side. You see here, we're going to find out that the spin is good because the speed is really nice. Um, we're going to need to offset this one to the left-hand side and possibly use some more left side spin. But regardless, the speed is perfect. That's going to give you a good replay to kind of sit there and mess around with the shot and try to get it to drop for you. All right, this is another hole in which I'm gonna show you two different ways to play it depending on your club and balls. As you can see here, I'm really trying to figure out how I wanna go about it with this account. So I decided to go ahead and play this one a little bit normal. And it's a lot of swap outs here. All right, so we're gonna go big topper, 10%. Now, I want you to be cautious something of cautious of something. I'm going to show you why. So big topper, 
Yep. And then I push back up to max to get my distance back, okay? Now, notice the overpower here is only about half of my ball is in the bottom target zone. And look at that. I almost put that in the sand on the drive. Did you see that? That might have went too fast for some people, but perfect ball. And look where this ball lands. I mean, I can't really cut it much closer than that. So we need to be very wary of how much overpower we use when we're pushing back up to max to get our distance. But as you can see here, we powered this thing up the fairway. It's really nice. It's going to leave us here for shot number two. Shot number two is played 10%. And like I say, um, this tournament is, is very difficult for me to give you the advice on most shots on whether you need to be playing at mid, minimum, or max. These drives are going to be very dependent on your overpower and how far away or how much distance you get on your drive. So you're going to need to check your own distance. But for me here, I'm playing this one 10%. As you can see, I'm playing it at minimum distance because when I pull my target back, I go right into the end bringer. So I'm playing this one minimum distance with the thorn. We're pulling this just one ring. Perfect ball. And we're knocking this one into the center of cut, picking up a nice little eagle. Now that's going to bring us on to the players who want to just go a little bit more aggressive uh, as I normally like to play. So here we are going to use a berserker. As you can see, I'm pushing up to max just to see what my ball guideline looks like. This is 10% adjustment. Definitely want to push back up to max here. We need all the juice we can get on this one. Here we're going full overpower, half a ball of curl to the right. And the one thing that I would say about this shot is just a little bit too much curl as I clip the rough and I roll out onto the fairway. Now, obviously, if I don't hit the rough there, I think we got some pretty good speed and we get ourselves a lot closer to the fringe line. But regardless, this is going to leave us with, you know, a max distance um, end bringer shot. I'm sorry, a mid distance end bringer shot if you're able to pull the top spin shot. But I can't. Notice how the how the ball guy line is glitchy. So we want to play that one at mid, but I'm going to have to back up here and use backspin. So now I'm putting my ball guy line at the hole. I hate playing the end bringer this way, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this one at almost max. Max was 3.5 rings. I decided to pull it like 3.1 because I wasn't at any plus yardage of my end bringer. But again, uh, dead center, picking up an eagle on hole number eight. So there's two different ways to play that one. And that brings us into our final hole, which is going to be hole number nine. Okay, hole number nine. Um, I did not play it this way. But I will tell you again, if you're a player who uh, has a ton of berserkers and has high-level clubs, I want you to smash this drive from there to here. Uh, even if you have an extra mile eight or a seven, you know, I, I think an extra mile seven, for sure an eight, you can go from here, boom, up here. And the reason that you want to play that shot, if you have the clubs and ball power to do so, is because that is going to leave you with a thorn for an albatross. Now, the only reason I'm not showing you one replay with that shot is because I came so darn close to picking up the albatross with the sniper i wanted to see if i could correct my adjustment and show you the albatross for most people who are going to have to play it this way so i'm going to go with the quarterback here and you know this is a 10 percent pull at max distance you can see the curl but i'm just trying to get this thing here onto the fairway now what you don't want to do if you're playing the same shot as me here is you don't want to go full top spin overpower quarterback because if you do, you are going to gain too much distance on your drive, which will leave you with a rough bump with your long iron. I would rather play the rough bump with my sniper on this hole. 25% at mid, and that's the same way that I would... Um, that's the only way that I'm playing this shot, okay? 
But for you people who were going with the um, the Berserker shot, you, I would play shot number two at 10%, okay? All right, notice this spin here. Like 1.8 top, right? Something like that. Yeah, 1.8 top, one right. Now, the ball guideline is going through the hole pretty healthy. And on my other account, I came up short. Short and to the right. Which is why I decided to play this on 25% instead of the 10% that I played on my first attempt. So the 25% is good because I like the way this ball is rolling towards the pin, but it still comes into the right-hand side at the very end there. The only reason it comes into the right-hand side is because we lost steam. Our ball slowed down on us. We need to use more topspin. I would suggest maybe going 2.1, 2.2 with the same one bar of right side spin. Pull that baby 25%. And I think you're going to get yourself a nice little albatross on hole number nine. Hey, that's a great qualifying round for Rookie. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up button to like the video. Please become a subscriber if you're not one already. And let me know how you do in the comments. Thank you for watching. I will work on Pro and have it up later today.